Hi guys, my name is Luke Davison. Uh, I'm a member of the technical team here at Pentagon Solutions. I'm an AEC software consultant and today I'm going to run you through uh, generative design and some of the new features in Revit 2021 within the AEC collection. So before we get into the process of how generative design really works, I'm going to actually use an analogy that Autodesk themselves have been pushing about the important parallels between nature and generative design. So we're going to use a tree as an example. And if you look at a tree and, and think of a tree, uh, you know, the trunk's wider and stronger than the rest of the, you know, the smaller branches. And from that point, those branches grow right. Uh, the forms adopted, this is the key part here. Uh, they're most suited for their habitat. And that's really what we're going to be trying to achieve with generative design, finding the most suitable design option um, quickly and cost effectively as well. Uh, so we'll move straight into the process here. So beginning with the generate phase. So this is the stage when design options are generated or created by the system. And the system will use algorithms and parameters specified by the designer. Uh, don't worry if that sounds too complicated. You can jump straight into a study because there is three uh, predefined studies and options that allow you to get generating uh, outputs immediately already pre-built into Revit. So uh, that's the first phase there. And we'll move on to the second one, which is the analyze phase. So the designs generated in the first step are now measured or analyzed based on how well they achieve goals that you as the designer uh, will have set out at the, at the beginning of the process. So in this particular example, we're looking at these windows and we're looking at how, um, how they perform with results to or with regards to solar gains um, or temperature losses and with regards to how visibility is through the windows. Um, so there's a couple of different goals there that we're basing these against and analyzing them against. And once you've done that, you can then rank your results. So this is where you're actually starting to, you're already straight away narrowing down your design options. And it allows you to collect a few different things that'll work uh, and maybe pull them out and show them to your clients or show them to different members of your design team. And then you can actually push forward in whatever direction uh, makes most sense to you uh, or whatever the client is asking for. So that's the rank phase there. Once you've sort of got a better idea of the direction you want to head and you want to evolve your design in that direction. So you can see from the graphic, we've, we've taken that window that ranked first and we've changed it a little bit here uh, and we've worked through some different options. Uh, again, this is where you can pull out different options and get input from your clients or input from your other members in your design team. Um, you can do that right the way through the process. Once you know exactly what direction you want to go in, you can explore this idea uh, and inspect the results. Um, so again, you're getting a, a range of varied options in here uh, and you can push forward in whatever direction makes most sense to you. Once you're happy enough with the final design or a favorite design option, what you do then do is just go ahead and integrate it straight into Revit at the push of a button. Um, this is really quick, really easy, uh, and we'll, that'll become clear in the example video that's going to be within the presentation here. Uh, but you'll see there that those windows have been integrated in, into that building. What you can do is actually run the study multiple times, generate multiple outputs with, in this example, different windows. Um, and you can just take, you know, maybe a screenshot from each or a render from each and go to your client and say, well, here's a load of different options. You know, what do you think about this? Uh, it's a really great tool for generating multiple outputs really, really quickly. Um, so I'm just going to move on to talk about some of the pre-built studies that are, are included with Revit 2021 out of the box. Uh, and it's important to note that these will only really work with uh, Revit that comes out of the AEC collection. Uh, so to begin with, we're going to be looking at three box massing. So this allows you to, there is a short description there, but this allows you to vary the heights and relative positions of, of three mass volumes to study their visual impact, but it also calculates surface areas and volumes as well. And if you're getting really sort of uh, techy with it and you like this one, you can actually add in more parameters such as floor space, 
you know, maximizing the amount of light coming into the buildings. Uh, and you can, I'll show you some examples of outputs that you can generate using the three box massing uh, study. The one below that, uh, I also have some outputs for this as well, which is the workspace layout. And it just generates uh, desk configurations in a room, uh, taking into consideration uh, distance to ex exits, views to the outside, um, even more than that, circulation space. It, it really takes into account a lot and you can generate good workspace layouts from that. And the final one that you get with Revit is actually to maximize uh, window views. And what this does is it generates viewpoints throughout the model and it gives a score to each viewpoint um, based on the views to the outside from that point. Uh, so it's a really handy tool and all these are really quick and easy to use, uh, which I'm going to demonstrate actually in this video here. So I'm not using the uh, workspace layout in this particular example, but I am doing a desk layout in the training room that you'll see um, the empty room there uh, within the Revit model. And I'm going to be using a stepped grid placement uh, study that I have built into my Revit at the minute. Um, basically, it allows me to place objects that are a certain distance apart. And I'm using this to sort of work out how to place desks into this room that are going to be suitably distanced um, for the socially distanced world that we're living in at the minute. Um, so I'll just hit play on this video here and, and let it run. So to begin your uh, project, you want to come up here, to, or your study, you want to come up here to your Manage tab and across to Generative Design. And you'll see Create Study there. That should open up a dialog box with your different study options in it. And you'll see I actually have a couple more than the uh, standard three, but um, this process is just as simple for, for all of them. Uh, so I'm going to pick stepped grid uh, object placement in this particular case. At the top, I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to specify the method. So the method at the minute is optimized. You can see the different options there uh, for different variables and goals. But I'm actually going to set it to like this because I want mine uh, set out in a certain uh, pattern or a certain specific way. It's then going to ask me to select the room so I can come straight into Revit, select the room as an element uh, in there and again with the family instance. So in this instance, I'm going to choose those desks for the training room uh, and you just click the reselect button there. Your variables then, I want these desks to be at least two meters apart uh, in the X and Y direction. So you can see it's as simple as dragging that wee slider. Uh, up and down. So I've set it to two meters in the X and Y direction and I've actually set it to one meter from walls. And you can actually turn these on and off as well if, it, if one doesn't work for you. I'm going to generate 40 solutions. Uh, once you're ready to go, we just click the generate button at the bottom and that'll start working for you. And it'll take a minute or two, but as the results populate, as you'll see here, you'll be able to view them. Uh, so the first eight are in there, you'll be able to start looking through your first eight results. And compared to the time it would take to model these out and, and work these out, it would, it's saving a whole lot of time, a whole lot of money, um, and you're getting loads of outputs that you can really filter through. Um, speaking of filters then, as these results are populating, you'll see there is we drop down filter at the top. So at the minute mine's just set to number of objects, but there is um, different options in there for sorting your uh, results. Uh, but there is a much more effective way of doing that down at the bottom here. So you'll see this wee uh, graph at the minute. And as I'm selecting these dots, the preview in the top right corner is changing uh, to be basically be whatever the study is. Um, It'll highlight whatever study it's referring to as you as you select the dots and select the points. Or you can actually come into this view here and specify goals that the objects must satisfy in order to um, be suitable for the study. So you see I've dragged up and down there and it's really chopped down uh, the amount of studies that are available. And if you click through them, you'll see some properties of the right hand side. Once you're ready, you click Create Revit Elements and you'll see that those desks appear in there 
uh, straight away. Uh, those desks come in as single objects, so they're not grouped or anything. So you can go in and edit these, those desks individually. Um, there's no problem with that at all. If you're unhappy with it, you just press, you know, just press back at the top or delete them out, run the study again, and you can input a different option in there. So you can work through those different options really quickly um, and see how they look in the model without actually putting all the effort into putting those desks in manually and spacing them out manually in this, in this example. So I'm just going to show you some other outputs that we'll have. Uh, so this is the three box massing output that you get. Um, there's obviously more pages than this. This is just a couple of the examples, uh, but you can see the types of things you'd be getting there uh, with the different box heights and box positions, the options uh, for the filters at the bottom. Uh, with your floor area and surface area also considered there as well. And this explore outcomes dialog box uh, is where all you're gonna get where you're gonna get all the results of all your studies. And you can see I've only ran this for to get 10 results rather than 40 uh, in the previous example. This is another example of the workspace layout, the one that's built into Revit. Uh, and we're gonna be using the same training room and the same idea. So you can see the types of outputs you're going to be getting. Uh, much more information in this study here. Um, you can see with the options of the right hand side, the properties of the right hand side, you can see the average distance to exits, um, number of desks. You can all filter through these options to get a design that works for you. Um, in this occasion, I've chosen that top right one there uh, and I've selected create rapid elements and you'll see it just does the same thing uh, as the video was showing and just places those straight into the, the building there for you. Okay, so those are some examples. I'm doing going to do a wee bit talking about visual programming. So at the minute, uh, there is those three standard uh, generative design studies in there. Autodesk are planning on adding more in as time progresses, and um, but there is a way of creating your own studies. It does require, however, a, a good sort of working knowledge of visual programming. Visual programming is a form of coding that does not require compiling code or familiarity with the textual programming language, um, but it does require the user to connect small nodes of predefined functionality. This approach is much easier to learn than textual programming and it makes tasks much more accessible. Uh, and I can speak from personal experience in this because I don't have any uh, previous experience coding or programming, uh, but I find that whenever you're learning this, uh, you, it becomes quite intuitive. It's much easier than learning a coding language because um, you're just drawing nodes from, uh, uh, drawing connections from one node to another, excuse me. Uh, with the primary software in this being Dynamo, uh, so if you know Dynamo, it's, it, it's, much, it's a high level of Dynamo to create uh, these studies, but as I say, there is, uh, there is more on the way as well. Okay, so that's really the bulk of the content. I'm just going to cover a few different uh, questions that, that people often have. So people often ask, you know, is this just a Revit 2021 thing? Absolutely, you won't find this in Revit 2020 or 19 or any of the previous versions. And you actually will find it quite difficult to use this uh, if you don't have the AC collection as well, because um, it gives you the different options there. You can still run Dynamo uh, if, you, if you have a standalone Revit, uh, but you can't run the generative design, so it just makes things much more uh, awkward uh, and difficult there. Uh, you're, just, you're not getting those standard studies either. And the main, really the last thing I'm going to finish with here is, how is this different from other types of generative design? And really the difference in this one is that it, it allows you to interact with your workflows directly in Revit. So you've seen me uh, selecting that desk, desk and selecting that room directly in the Revit context. Um, you can select the elements, define the goals, run the studies really quickly, and then your results are automatically generated back into your Revit um, for, your for you to make a design decision. It just makes it easier to output or push outputs uh, through there and get loads of different options and design options from your generative design. So this will not only boost your creativity, 
and provide more design variety, but it's ultimately going to save you time and money. Thanks for watching.